Hey everyone, this is Kat. And I'm Amber. And today we are going to be talking about parenting while expatting. Yeah. Or living abroad. Or traveling. Either way, yeah. that fits you. And what you're doing. For those who don't know, we have a 12 year old boy. We call him the boy in the room. Because that's generally where you can find him. He's a mystery to us all. But he's 12 and we smell him every night. So we know he's alive. And he, we hear him cooking noodles, so. <laughs> and eating crackers <laughs> and chips, so we know he's alive. But, uh, is either that or a rat? One yeah, one of the two. It's one of the two. But the rat, is, if it's a rat, it's a very intelligent rat. <laughs> um, so today we have been having a discussion about all the uh, ins and outs of parenting while abroad. Um, the things that we never thought would happen, or we never just thought about. Um, and the things that have changed in our lives because he's along on this journey with us. Um, and uh, he's Amber's biological son. So I'm just here for input. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for input. <laughs> input. I feel like this he's parent, raising this us. Parenting is a, it's a, it's a partnership. Parenting yeah. is a partnership. She's raising us both as we both navigate. I don't have any kids. Never had any. I had a dog. I miss my dog. Hey, Lori. Hey. Um, so yeah, it's been a total learning experience for both of us. And I feel sorry for her sometimes. I really do because, you know, we, me and the boy in the room, we, we hard at it. And she's stuck in the middle. So, but we're here today. Nobody's dead. Nobody's bleeding. Two thumbs up just for that long, yeah, right? Yeah, doing good so far. Yeah. He ain't called him back to the States and said, come get me. So. No. We can to have to go. Yeah. So, um, let's kick it off with... So we, we were, this is, I'll start and then Amber's going to take it over. So we moved, we moved abroad, we thought this was going to be easy. We had two boys, 15 old decided he wanted to stay with his pops. Totally you understand, he's going through the time frame when he needs his pops. And you know, he's a little musty, kind of going over there. So the 11 year old was at that time. We thought we were going to homeschool, it's going to be easy. He's going to want to see the world. It's going to be fantastical. And we were doing this great big thing. And Amber, what did we get? <laughs> well, we probably got what a lot of people are experiencing right now, which is homeschool is not the ideal that we thought it was going to be. It's not for everyone. It ain't for 90% of us. It ain't for everybody. Or every child, even. Yeah. So, um, because I'm, I'm not new to homeschooling. Like, I've been in a kind of a cooperative um, schooling situation before with other parents with another with an older child when they were younger and it was great it was wonderful it was fabulous but um yeah it's just full time where you're doing that full time that's all you do and the kid doesn't have any kind of interaction with other peers it, it takes its toll it takes its toll on anybody so we've definitely seen that um on this journey because we with us we're used to um, not seeing anyone that looks like us since we as we've gone through different countries we go for days and have not seen people that look like us so imagine how it is for a young person who is still you know still figuring things out um, and needing that kind of needing their own reflection and um, and peer interaction and he doesn't get to have that so much so so yeah it's definitely been challenging um, to kind of try to, you know, give him what he needs education-wise and then also social, social as well. Um, and you just can't necessarily, you have to get to the point where you realize you can't do everything, that you may not hit it 100%. Um, and then we also knew that when coming on this journey um, that we were going to gain a lot and then there's some things that you sacrifice at the same time. So. We do think that we're all experiencing something new and great and it's life changing for all of us. Um, but at the same time, we also have to get used to a completely different kind of scenario and lifestyle. And I think we've adjusted fairly well, considering, considering, I think, I think it's taken us a year. Well. That's true. It's taken us That's a whole true. year. Uh, and we're slow traveling. We're not yeah. going a month in each country, which I would not recommend um, with kids. I just don't think it's good for you. It's, not, it's definitely not good for them. Routine is, is very important for everybody. And when you have a child, you really need to get a routine set. Um, and Amber mentioned social interaction. Because of the time difference, we've been as much as 12 to 13 hours ahead um, of his peers. So 
he was getting up early to talk to them um, so they could it'd be their night it'd be our five o'clock in the morning he'd be up you know mm -hmm. and um you know it's detrimental on him because you know we still got our full day ahead of us okay. and he's a kid but he wants to talk to his friends he needs to talk to his friends uh, and then we still got to school we got to get through for the day um so it was it was a, a learning curve and right. then and I think he started opening up too more as far as being able to talk to people who are in different time zones. Thank right. goodness. Um, so he does have interaction, even even if it's not just with you know people he knows in, back in the states. Right. So there's that. Right. And, and online gives you that. Um, I've never been a person who thought a kid should be on a lot as much, but when you look abroad. And you're from whatever country, and and ninety percent of your friends are well, not all your friends are there at eleven years old. Mm -hmm. You gotta give a little bit. You gotta concede. No. And we've done that. Uh, it was a battle for me. I'm not gonna lie, because I'm old school Southern, and I'm like, you know, he need to be out. He need to be doing this. <laughs> he, we got chores. You know, read a book. You know, and he's just like, I don't want to do that. That doesn't interest me. And I got it. Took me a while. Ain't gonna lie. Yeah, and but now you know. So what we try to do is kind of um, encourage the things that he seems to have an interest in, or if he does have a spark of something one day, it's like okay, just okay, go for it, go for that, go with that, as long as it's safe. Um, and that was one of the things I wanted to address too is um, safety as you're traveling through different countries with a child. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously that's a, a big issue, but it's more so um, an issue since we've been in Southeast Asia. It's been more. It's interesting because it's been more that um, I can speak, especially on here in Vietnam, that it feels very um, safe in the sense that kids have a lot of autonomy um, and they move around a lot, even by themselves, and don't seem to have any any kind of issues, any, you know, any trouble, and, um, which is great, which is wonderful. But of course, that's not our, that's not our history. That's not what we're used to. We're used to, you know, watching out for the, for the white van, super crazy, you know. Um, so there's, and he, he's a little older, thank goodness, um, at 12, he really can go out and get around. It's just a matter of being cognizant for us, being cognizant of, um, him being knowing that he is an American, he's a Black American and a boy, um, and, a boy um, and a different Male. country, right? <laughs> in a different country, so we have to be Stereo. aware for him, right? That things that he may not be aware of, even in a place that is is seems to be safe or is relatively safe, right. because everywhere we go won't be like this. Um, it would, it, and it won't feel that way. So we gotta have to constantly. Like be vigilant, not to make him paranoid, but just so that we um, we all stay realistic. Right. I guess we don't want to be unrealistic, and you know it's like oh it's all bubbles and glitter here, and then we go somewhere else, a different country where you know you have to really watch your back constantly. And then he's like, but I thought it was all bubbles and glitter. Right. No. <laughs> so the thing that we battle, in, in my opinion, is. Um, the Western media, which has told the rest of the world that black people steal, rob, and murder, you know, mm -hmm. rape. And he's a black male. Uh, he's a tall kid. He's 12, he's getting skinny, he's getting tall, he's growing. He's a bit taller than us now. Yeah. Right at her. So he, he still moves as an eight year old almost, I would say. He touches things in the store, he walks around aimlessly because that's what kids do. But we're so ingrained, both of us from being from the South in America, that you have to be hyper vigilant when you're in stores because the cameras are looking at you, security's looking at you, they're falling behind you in stores and things of that nature. And so to me, and to them, because I've seen them watch him, he looks suspicious, but basically it's all because of Western media. Um, so I've, we've, we've had to tell him, say, hey, look, you can walk through the store, but you can't really put your hands on everything. 
just because you've never seen it before, just look at it, you know. Don't pick up, put down. You know, he does that kid thing where he's bebopping to this music in his head. Nobody else hears it. You know, he look a little off walking around. He's not, but that's what the kids do. You know, y'all yeah, look a little crazy. But, um, so we, we've had to do that. Plus, he had, the thing is, is that he's had a sort of sheltered life, let's be honest. Uh, where he goes is with his mom or another adult. So he's never really walked by himself somewhere. When we were kids, we were let loose from sundown, I mean, from sun up to sundown. You can run anywhere you wanted to, as long as by the time the streetlights came on, you were back at the house. Well, by the time he came along, we weren't doing that anymore in America. So here they still do that. Yeah, and so it's an adjustment not only for us, because we're like, hey, you look different than everybody else. You're going to stand out no matter where you go. Right. But because he still thinks he's, he's had this sort of sheltered existence, he walks around with his money in his hand. Uh, the cell phone is out. He just ambles. He's not aware of his surroundings at all. Petty theft is really, really common in Southeast Asia. They will ride past you on a motor sc scooter and snatch. Grab and snatch is very, very common. And so those are the things that we're teaching him more so than, hey, uh, beware of the cops. It's really just right. beware of petty theft. Right. Uh, and beware of stereotypes. Yeah, and and yeah, just in general. I mean, there are things that I don't. There are things that I don't see that may not, may or may not be an actual issue, but I still worry about. Right. So you know, still don't talk to strangers. So you don't right. talk to strangers, yeah, yeah. no matter where you are in the world. You just don't talk to strangers. Not by yourself, right? Because he'll go to the store by himself. Right. We just want you to go to the store and come back, right? And we want to start giving. You know more, more yeah things. and that's what he's able to do now that's what he you know is getting more into doing right. and we want to encourage that so um so yeah as long as he, you know we stay aware and we don't mind showing him what she like what she said then i think you know but it's it's a challenge it's a daily right because we came on this journey for freedom mm -hmm. but at the same time you have to be smart yeah and you have to be um street smart a little bit you know yeah um, people will rob you. I mean, and that's and the same the same that could happen that would be for us um, is for him. I mean, right. we don't teach or anything stop that we don't anything, do. right? That because we have had things happen, and so right. We'll but when he's away. by himself, though, see, he's always with us ninety percent of the time. That ten percent that he's by himself, he still has a mentality that he's got two adults around him, sure. protecting and watching out for him. Sure. And so we're teaching him. You, you have to watch out for this. So even when you're with us, right. you know, you're that third eye for us mm -hmm. as well. You know, and it's, it's been a struggle um, in that regard because he's still a kid. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I think that that's always the case when you're raising children. You're always teaching them about safety. And But when you're moving from place to place, from right. country to country, um, it's, it's different. Right. And you have to recognize the difference. Right. Um, so without making them paranoid, but I don't. I, we do feel free, and right. I think that um, he should be able to feel that way as well. But we've also earned some of that, right? With um, life, with life right. experience and wisdom, um, and sometimes, yeah, you can't be but so free right. as a child. You can only be, yeah, but so free. That's a, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's really a good point. Um, we mentioned education. You talked about it briefly, the homeschooling. Oh, yeah. So, um, so that's a little bit crazy. So, um, homeschooling, like I said, was a challenge, has been a challenge. We've taken a little bit of a break since we moved from um, Hanoi to Da Nang. Um, summer break. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're calling it. But, um, yeah, but it's a lot. Like, we, we, my hat goes off, as always, to teachers. Um, and I feel for them and the predicament that for parents and teachers right now, all over the world, trying to figure out how to manage um, health and education at the same time. But um, so for us, we um, we feel like we he really does need you know the peer interaction when he can get it. Um, so we are looking more into um, a school situation, um, especially now that we're here and there's no there's no cases here. Um, and there are schools that are English only. Finding something that he can at least be a, um, in part time, possibly, mm -hmm. um, if possible. But if not, then you know, looking for some more one on one um, online teaching that he can participate in, just because you know our experience and 
expertise only goes so far. Right. And I think you have to be willing to accept that as a parent. Humble um, yourself. Yeah, humble yourself, for real. And um, you we was humble ourselves. It took some yeah. conversations because I am old school South and I'm ex military. I did almost 10 years in the military. So, my, the way I act, where everything I approach life is sort of directed. You know, I'm, I'm used to being in a leadership position. I'm used to teaching. I've taught classes in the military. I've been to school in the military. Um, and so I, I just think everything is, is, is what it is. You know, you don't go back and forth. You got you to gotta buckle down. You got to get it done. Move on today. And teaching a kid who isn't really as interested in whatever um, was, you know, eye opening for me. Um, and then recognizing that I can't teach at that level, right? I'm used to teaching adults. Teaching adults whose paycheck depends on the accomplishing this course right. is totally different than teaching a kid. Uh, they really don't care. No matter what you say to them at this age, mm -hmm. eh, unless they're motivated, as one of the people we were at lunch with today said, to homeschool, the kid has to be self-motivated. If they're not self-motivated, homeschool is not for them. And I'm not saying he's a bad kid, I'm not saying he's dumb, he's none of that, but he's a kid, right? And so we had to really, truly, and it took Amber many, many conversations with me to wake me up and say, hey, he's, he's a freaking kid, sis. You know, not even wife, but sis. Tighten, you know, wake your ass up and recognize who you're dealing with. You're not dealing with adults. Right. And once we did that, we realized we need to do a maintenance type of education where we're just immersing him and things so that he doesn't freak in. And now, like she said, we're moving toward getting him into a more accredited program where there's actually people who know how to teach. 12-year-olds <laughs> who understand the motivation of 12-year-olds and uh, who aren't their parents. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, because, you know, we lose it every now and then. You know, I'm like, I don't understand this is easy. How'd you feel that? What's going on? What are you doing? Are you paying attention? Are you awake? Are you... If you hadn't been up at 5 o'clock, on the chat, you'd have been here awake, 10 o'clock, ready to go. Why ain't you ready to go? Why ain't you brush your teeth this morning? I understand. You know, teachers are, you know, whoo, hats off to teachers. You yes. are a blessed, blessed creature. Yes. Yep. So, humble yourself. Right. Recognize if you can't do it, get your kids. Use your resources. Get your kids. And it's going to cost you. Yeah. Schooling overseas is not cheap. If you think it is, you're going to be hurt. So to add that to your budget, true, it's yeah. gonna cost. Well, we're not talking no hundred and fifty either. No, uh -uh. Yeah. it's a bill, baby. Yeah, it's a bill. Yeah, but it's a bill I'm willing to front. Yeah, <laughs> education is is, is worth it. It took it's us a year it. to get here to say that. Yeah, it's worth it every freaking penny. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so raising the kids been. Fun. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a journey, it's a learning experience for all of us, and and it's beautiful. I mean, obviously, we're all learning things we would never have, you know, about the world, history, culture that we would never have learned sitting in a classroom in the United States. That's just point blank period. Right. Um, so that I'm grateful for, so grateful for. Um, so, but on top of that, we want to. Yeah, have some structure in place as well. But that's right. that's best. We think that's best for us, for our family. You right. know, some people, um, some children don't need that type of structure necessarily for learning. But we've learned that we need a little bit more structure right. when it comes to um, for him. And so yeah. he yeah. definitely needs it, mm -hmm. and we need it. Yeah, yeah it helps us stay motivated. It helps us help us stay on track. Amber teaches Monday and Tuesday. I teach Wednesday and Thursday. And Friday is um, do whatever day. Yeah. Some days we turn do, some days we don't. So we do whatever. Um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Yeah. I think outside of education and safety, um, we're just raising a boy, and um, it's been interesting. You know, <laughs> why are you smiling? No, yeah, we're mm -hmm. yeah. raising the boy. We're teaching him, you know, and we're both different people. We have different ways of teaching. So we've learned to mix and flow really well. I'm, I'm more of the strict disciplinarian members, uh, but he's scared to hurt you. So we don't believe in punishment, <laughs> corporal punishment. But, uh, because it takes a lot for Amber to blow. So when she blows, we all duck. 
uh, versus I can blow every minute they count me or anything. I'm just like, take trash, I'm like three times already, I'm done, I'm done. Um, <laughs> So when Amber says it though, I'm like, Lord, come here, let me tie this trash bag up for you, pal. We all in trouble. So, um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's been interesting. Routine, routine is is good, especially yes, when you're and and then like I said before, in our situation where we are changing environments, have keeping a routine in the house helps a lot. So yeah, yeah. chores. So we should definitely. I think chores helps all of us. It does. It really does. Uh, gives everybody a, a, a role in the house mm-hmm. uh, and it makes him feel like he's not on vacation because if we don't give him that i think he feels like this is just a trip that's true and this is not a trip this is our life this is that's right we're not on vacation here. we are living every day we're paying bills <laughs> right see the other video for that okay. um so yeah so everything that we do this is geared toward just living our, our daily day-to-day existence and yeah and for him that is school it is chores um and learn how to cook a little bit too, and clean, because we do all of that. And one last thing I will say is that being out of the U.S. does not mean that you are not aware and exposed to what is going on for African Americans in the U.S. Um, So just the internet is a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, so he is well aware of what's going on, um, and and who he is as a young black man um, who is an American. <laughs> no matter where he goes, he is a he is a young African American male, and so um, yeah. So I think it's important to maintain that perspective too. Not in the sense that this is something that limits you in any way or holds you back or anything like that but just to realize that um there's a reason why we're doing this there's a reason why we're doing this and yeah and we create our lives and you know if you feel free there's a reason for that it's because your identity that has been that's been placed on you as um an american or what's what's been the black american experience is not essentially who you are um, and sometimes it takes moving around to to see that to realize it so I am glad that he's getting that experience right. and we we definitely um, make sure that we maintain that focus as well and the perspective most more than anything right so when I said essentially that you need to humble yourself um, I thought he would be on this journey to be geeked uh, because that was geeked, because I was looking for freedom because I've lived in the US for 40 plus years and I wanted freedom, but he's lived in the U.S. for 11 years, and it's been a, a pretty sheltered existence to a certain extent. You know, his mom's always been there. Amber's a great mom. Um, so he hasn't had a rough life, you know what I'm saying? So to him, this is nothing too different, except just in a different country a little bit. And he has to find new new snacks yeah. um, and new, <laughs> new noodle packs, you know. So we had to, I had to humble myself and say, well, he, you know, this is a grand adventure, but it's not an adventure that he probably would have picked. And in 10 years, he may not pick it still, you know? When he's oh, an adult, he may not want to travel. Um, and I have to let that go, you know? I'm like, man, my kid, my kids, we, they want to travel. No, no, no. We did a conversation with Amber's eldest. She's like, I really want her to get out and go to another country. I said, that's not what she likes. That's not what she likes. You know, we have to let that go. And that's, again, it's just, we're learning ourselves a little bit. And we're releasing the structures that were placed on us that we inadvertently put on him a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. So we're releasing all of those chains and things like that. And it's been lightning or lighting. Was that the right word? Uh, yeah. I mean, lighter. Yes. Because we're releasing. releasing. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I've always said my upbringing wasn't the greatest, but I still was pulling in that shit, you know? And putting it on parenting. Whew. We are so much lighter. And mm-hmm. being black in America is such a weight. Right. And to have that lifted off of us has been amazing. And have him have this experience. Whether he knows it or not, right. it's going to shape who he is. And so we just have to, you know, get him some more noodles and keep moving. But I do want to tell the story about the electricity. Should I? Oh, okay. I think we're going to call it a day. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> so this was a learning for me, another one. 
So this apartment that we live in in Danae, everything's covered except for electricity. And you'll find that in different places. Sometimes electricity is covered, sometimes it's not. But if it's not, it's generally because it's expensive, right? And so me, I'm cheap. I'm not going to pretend we have a budget and I want to keep it at that. And so I am the electricity monitor in the house. Is that my job, babe? Yeah. I would say so. Yeah, and I irked the heck out of Amber, who I told in the past life must have been rich because she don't cut off a light, close the door, close the cabinet, and the boy's the exact same way. So I said to him, I said, hey, you got a you know, light bill, light bill, you gotta, cut, you gotta cut things off. You can't just have three or four things going, can't have the fan and the AC on. You gotta cut them off, light bill, light bill, light bill. And I just kept saying that. And he said, so what is that? I don't know what you mean. Isn't that what you said was a light bill? Or electricity? Light bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can send light bill. And he said, right. why do you keep talking about the air conditioning when it comes to the light bill? I said, wait, I said, you, you're joking, right? He's like, no, because I'm from the South, right? Light bill means electricity. Right. It's an electricity bill. Electricity covers everything. And I had to explain it to him. I said, oh, man, I feel like an, an idiot. I'm using something that I've always heard. I always knew what it meant because it was just something we did in the South. We said in the South. Amber knew what I was talking about. I didn't even think that he didn't know what I was talking about. He's like, I don't have the light on. I'm like, yeah, but you got the AC and the fan on. That's electricity. I said, you're leaving, you're leaving this on. You're leaving this on. Yeah, but you said light bill. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, but I meant the electricity bill. Everything. Then we went into a discussion of what electricity in our house. We use it everything because our whole house is electricity. Right. Electric right here. Uh, we don't have gas, anything. So that would have, you know, everything's electric. And the difference in what we pay here as opposed to somewhere else where we don't have to pay electricity. Right. It's included in the rent. Things right. like that. Right. Which changes when you go from country to country. Of course, city to city, apartment to apartment. Yeah. Right, it just depends. Right. Because uh, we could get an apartment here that has electricity included. It's going to cost a little bit more. Because they're, they're averaging out what, we, what they think the electricity bill is going to be. And for us, that's never going to be a good thing. Because um, we are going through menopause, honey, perimenopause, Ooh. whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be an honey, baby. Ooh. Amber Bill is so hot. <laughs> hot. She a oven. <laughs> baby, she a miniature <laughs> oven. Miniature <laughs> oven. Same time of the day. It's hot. It's hot. And just because it's hot. I just told be still, as my grandmother said. And the boy walking around the hoodie in 90 degree weather, 2000 degree weather, actually. So, yeah, so those are the things, like I said, man, it's just life it just hands you stuff. And it, it was hilarious looking at the conversation. This just happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't know what you mean. It's like, you know, lights are, I cut the lights off. I do so now I got to stop saying like you, and I got to say the electricity. I'm gonna need you to cut it down, bro. And we worked it. Yeah. It's learning. Oh, it is learning. All right, so that is parenting. <laughs> well, LeBron. In 30 minutes or less. Yes, parenting while LeBron, parenting while expats. Uh, yeah. Parenting while black. Yeah. Bro. And you gotta work together. Yeah. You gotta work it. You gotta talk. You gotta work it out, bro. Whew. And on that note, we're gonna call this video a donor. Like, subscribe, follow, share, wandering soup. Follow the blog, follow the YouTube channel, follow us on IG, wandering soup. Thanks for listening, y'all. Peace and love.